the 65 game rule, 65 games to qualify for MVP for all NBA. We just saw last night, completely aside from Joel Embiid, Tyrese Halliburton suit up after missing 11 games with a hamstring injury. He suited up. He played 20 minutes to qualify for it to be a game. And then he sat out the rain of that game. For starters, let's just big picture it. What were your thoughts when they put in the 65 game rule and has it changed throughout the season? I mean, I guess it makes like, I want to kind of take it from their perspective. Like it makes sense, right? Like I feel like there's been a lot of awards throughout the years that have been like, I don't know, man, does he deserve this because of X, Y, and Z? He only played 57 games. Like, does he deserve that? So like putting a threshold at least like qualifies or disqualifies somebody right away. Like if you play 65 games, you're eligible for all the awards. If you play 64, you're not. The problem with that is someone could play 64 games and be a lot more impactful than somebody that plays 65. And like, it seems like semantics just to have rules in place to say like, oh, this is anti-load management. Nobody's not resting, right? They're injured when they're not playing. Like if somebody is completely healthy throughout the entire season, they're not missing 17 games due to load management. Unless like maybe Jimmy Butler, who like really doesn't care about anything. And (laughs) honestly, honestly, maybe that's the only reason that I miss Jimmy being here is because I wish that he could tell Joel to stop giving a fuck about anything else. That would be like the number one thing was just his attitude of not caring about anything else outside of the locker room. I wish that was more of what Joel seemed to care about. Not that he's unmotivated or unfocused on not the point, but to go back to that, it is, I think it's kind of silly. And I think it's kind of silly to like have loopholes where like Halliburton can be like, I'm going to play the first 20 minutes of this game. and I'm going to sit the rest of it because we all acknowledge that the regular season doesn't really matter that much. And we all acknowledge that this is a silly rule that I only wanted to get to the all NBA status so that I can make more money because you guys put those stipulations in place as well. And really that's what it comes down to. So it's frustrating because guys are doing it for the wrong reasons and the, the, the league put it in place to try to rectify something that doesn't really have an effect on it. So I think that it needs to at least be reevaluated because I don't think it's necessarily like it's not coming from the wrong place, but it's not doing what they wanted it to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'll start by saying I was pretty pro this rule that I'm not going to rewrite my history and what I thought that my personal frustration is that we've seen Embiid miss out on MVP because he quote unquote didn't play enough games. And that first one specifically, I would argue that was the the driving argument of why Jokic deserved it over Embiid. I'll also throw in that I just wholeheartedly disagree with the the saying that the best availability is availability. No, it's not. The best ability is ability. Guys that can actually play basketball at a high level. And I'll take a guy that is way more impactful in 50 games than a guy that is semi-impactful in all 82. That, to me, that matters most. The peaks that players can play at, that's, to me, a significantly more driving force. Of course, you want guys there on a night-to-night basis. But if you can't reach the level that others can, then you can't reach the level that other guys can, that you're never going to be as good of a player as them. But to the 65-game point as a whole, there's like like... Real deal. I, I think people take for granted like how serious the monetary stipulations are. Like in Tyrese Halliburton's case specifically, it's a like forty million dollar difference whether or not he plays sixty five games or not, because he will be an all NBA all NBA player. He will be at least an all NBA third team, probably one or two. I I, I think um if he plays the sixty five games, if he does not and does not qualify, that's a forty million dollar difference for him. That's a lot of money. And like people always throw in the phrase like max contract. Max contract means something different to every player based on these qualifications that you get. Right. And I think we're now seeing like the downside. This obviously was not what the rule was intended, but we're seeing guys play injured in a way that otherwise I don't think they were. I think Joel is another example of that. I don't think that was the sole reason why he played. I really think that there is like internally in him this desire to prove the injury, injury prone rep long wrong and the desire to actually help the Sixers team win prove like help with all that i think those are all factors as well it's not that he just wants to get to 65 but it's definitely not coincidental either and i do think that like in joel's case specifically i do think he entered the season not caring about mvp that he's like i already got it under my belt and then flash forward a couple months in he was playing like the best player and putting up scoring as at the historically greatest level ever in nba history and thought you know what maybe i should be going for this thing and that's where things have kind of turned in this direction but I do think that there's like some unintended consequences of the 65 game rule. And I think like maybe they had it right before where it was up to a person's interpretation for how much you held that against guys. Cause 
I do get the logic. Like I'm against the concept that the best availability is ability, but there's a give and take with that. Like, obviously like if it's between two guys and one played more and you would rather root for that guy or rather vote for that guy. Cause it's cause of that. I get that as well. Like that means something different to every person. And I think that's a little bit of the beauty of the voting process. So while I was for it before, now that I'm seeing it play out, I think this was an absolute mistake by the league. Yeah, I would agree. Um, especially once you see, like, I think honestly it's the Halliburton example is more like indicative of how right. players view it versus the Joel of like trying to play through an injury for, you know, a various amount of reasons. Like you pointed out, he might just want to try to win a game because they're struggling right now. Like, and Draymond they were struggling. Spoke very negatively of it as did Pat Bev as well. Like, I think the player wise, this is pretty across board. Yeah. Which is the only way it'll change. Like those guys speaking up about it is the only way it'll change, which is why you like those guys having voices within the media point to them. Um, I wanted to say with Joel wanting the MVP, it's another thing that people like use against him, dude. Like, do you, like, do you think that like Kobe didn't want more MVPs? Like, do you think that I, Michael Jordan didn't want all the MVP? Like, do you think LeBron doesn't think he should have more than four MVPs? Like, do you think that these guys are walking around being like, yeah, it doesn't matter. I'm just here to have fun. No, dude. Being the MVP should mean something. Like, and it's those motherfuckers. Sorry, I'm swearing a lot on this podcast. Yeah, you haven't it's, let it fly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it's It's been a long day. But it's, those, <laughs> it's that group of people that t- tear Joel down that use that against him that also like use that as a prop for Jokic. And again, I'm so over the Embiid versus Jokic. Dude, they're both amazing. They're both MVPs. They're both awesome. They do Absolutely. things completely differently. They've revolutionized the game of bath- basketball in two different ways. Like they respect each other a ton. I have no problem with Nikola Jokic. I think that that was so annoying and overblown. It's the people that like use him to then force an anti Embiid agenda that it's so frustrating, dude. Like he should care about winning MVP. Jokic should care about winning MVP. Giannis yeah. should care about winning MVP. Shea Gilgis Alexander should be wanting to win MVP. Luca and Edwards, like these guys should have that as a goal, right? Like when did that become uncool to like want to win these awards? That'd be sick. Could you imagine being the MVP of the NBA? That's sick. Yeah. That's amazing. That's an that's an honor that very very few people have ever acquired in their lives. That's like stop making it uncool to want to win those awards. Stop making it uncool to want to be all-stars or to care about regular season games or to care about these things. It's so annoying and like just like gross. It's so watching basketball is so frustrating. Going on Twitter to to talk about basketball is so frustrating because these people just they don't like Kevin Durant, the tweet always flies around like NBA fans don't even like basketball and it's true. They yeah. want to create these narratives and these dr- this drama to the league. They want to watch soap operas rather than watch the game of basketball. Because if you wanted to watch, you would love Joel. You would love KD. And you would love Jokic. And you would love all these guys because they're awesome at basketball. So like, try to step back and have that little perspective for a second. Instead of just like shitting on these guys for like wanting to win awards that are presented to them by the league that they play for.